Hello, I'm glad to be part of this conference and my um, presentation is about solution-oriented LCA in a geographical context. Uh, to start, I will first talk about um, previous work. Um, in 2012, there was the first uh, article uh, trying to provide a conceptual frame to the combination of urban metabolism and life cycle assessment. It came from previous work that uh, noticed that urban metabolism was not uh, enough uh, because the city was considered as a black box with input and output flows. But the indirect or hidden flows that were generated by these input and output flows uh, were not considered and uh, the environmental impacts also were not uh, assessed. And uh, in this article, they proposed a new frame uh, which proposed that the city is, is still the, the, the box under study, but uh, it is composed of several activities, and these activities were linked to the flows occurring in the cities and will generate input and output flows uh, that will be connected to other activities which are outside the boundaries of the city and also connected to elementary flow which will provoke the environmental impact and then can be assessed using a life cycle assessment. So um, after this article there was a first um, uh, case study about cities and uh, here the, you can find again the, the city black box uh, and all the flows were connected to, to uh, corresponding processes in, in the life cycle assessment. Um, from the life cycle assessment side, there were also an awareness to urban metabolism. The same year, uh, there was a review published by Wazo and, and colleagues in 2012. Uh, they compared different, uh, different environmental impact of cities and uh, they concluded that LCA was the only one which was really compliant with life cycle thinking. Uh, and they could be able to also uh, uh, provide information about hidden or, or indirect flows. Uh, and they also um, uh, uh, gave an overview of the key issues to adapt life cycle assessment to urban metabolism. And right after, they also, the same team published the uh, first case study and they really here detailed all the classical steps of LCA and how they, they adapted it to urban metabolism case studies. Uh, so if, if we compare these two models of the articles that came out in the same period, uh, they both took uh, the geographical area as a reference flow. It was the city for the time and for Wazo, it was not a city, it was a non-urban territory, but in both cases, it was a limited geographical area. Um, for Goldstein, the functional unit was considered to be the capita uh, cross domestic product, uh, based, uh, based on population, uh, because they considered that the, the, the city was a support for the living of in its uh, inhabitants. Uh, uh, in the article from Wazoo, in fact, they analyzed uh, carefully what was occurring, what was the long planning, the current scenario of the territory, and they defined from this analysis, they defined several land use functions for environment, society, and economy. And this was considered as the functional unit. So, uh, GDP in, in this uh, article is part, is one of the possible functions, which is an economic function. In both cases, they took the geographical areas, the foreground system, and to build activities. Uh, in the first case, Goldstein considered that because the city was a support for the living and inhabitants, they only consider consumption functions. 
recognizable because they integrate uh, different fun functions. They integrate consumption, but also uh, local production. And uh, in both cases, uh, the background system was considered to be the applied system. And Goldstein uh, integrated both upstream and downstream uh, systems, uh, but was only uh, integrated uh, upstream system. The data uh, came from previous uh, studies and also from uh, existing economic statistical databases. In the case of Loiseau, it was also completed by local search. What about their results now? Um, in the case of Goldstein, they could compare different cities uh, and they could provide environmental indicators for each considered activity. And they could compare the city uh, on the basis of their GDP functional unit. They did not compare uh, environmental impacts between on site and off site, but uh, it could have been possible, but she didn't do it in the article. In the case of Loiseau, they, they also provided environmental indicator for each considered activity. They could compare on site and off site system, and they could compare also environmental impact uh, between consumption of the and But uh, in these two articles, what about decision? In fact, both studies provide very interesting insights. They can they, they allow to compare geographical area. They allow to know how dependent on a site a geographical area can be, uh, and they allow to know which local activity contributes to which environmental impact. But but no decision can affect. Uh, why? Because if you come back to fundamentals of decision, uh, the role of the decision maker consists in addressing problems with effective action. And the decision are considered to be effective only if the action can be controlled by the decision maker and all these possible actions can be studied, investigated with their consequences. It's quite systematic. And in fact, in uh, classical LCA, product scale LCA, uh, there is a concept which is totally linked to decision, which is the concept of the foreground system. The foreground system is the part of the system that is directly controlled by a given stakeholder. So if you account for this definition, uh, the foreground system, if it's detailed enough, and if, if, if provides the list of possible scenarios and parameters that are controlled by stakeholders, then you can, uh, you can uh, uh, come out with action leaders. So this concept, in fact, is very underused, even in classical LCA. Uh, what happens with the classical LCA? Here you, you see a, a type of results that you can obtain. Uh, so you compare a few scenarios, the ID3, it can be five, but you don't have a lot of scenarios. Uh, and you will find that one of them is better than one indicator, but for the other one, it's another solution, and you will never find one solution that is better than all others. So it's commonly said that LCA provides undecidable results. Um, and then, often, other aspects drive to the final decision. Or you will have to set priorities between indicators. But what happens is that uh, usually the decision maker doesn't really know what these indicator means. Uh, uh, doesn't know what is indication, uh, for example. And uh, so the, the decision in that case, the decision maker will often choose what he knows the best of the, the highest priority. So, in fact, when uh, when the decision is made uh, based on uh, uh, subjective uh, choices or uh, based on other considerations like cost, uh, then the the environmental study will serve as a justification 
um, communication will be restricted only to the improvement and we will not communicate about what can be integrated. So it's close to greenwashing, in fact, and it, it's exactly what we want to avoid in life cycle assessment. So these observations have led me to, to propose, uh, to suggest another way of thinking, which I call action oriented towards the end. Uh, in my opinion, as you should provide a list of action levers to each decision maker and uh, with the assessments of their consequences. So what is an action lever precisely? Uh, it's a parameter of the foreground system that can be controlled by one decision maker. Uh, and to know what he should do, the decision maker has to know which is the sense of action of this parameter, should we put it up or down, and what it needs also, it requires also to quantify the effect of uh, this action on the environmental indicators. In fact, if you represent uh, this way of thinking. Uh, you have here uh, your model, which, which provides you a list of possible parameters. Some of them are controlled and some of them are not. And these are also important because the uncontrolled parameters will give you uh, the uncertainties. And so this is your system. And then you can assess the consequences using life cycle assessment. Uh, so what type of question for the answer? Uh, if you take one uh, one indicator for each of them, each indicator according to uncertainty, it will provide you what is the most influent combination of parameters that can decrease this impact. Um, it will provide you with such results. These parameters influence you have to be up or down. And this, they are action leaders. And two parameters that are not found influence uh, on this indicator are not action leaders. So you have a list of actions possible for each indicator. Uh, how do we do that? Um, I'm not going into mathematical detail, but we, we, use, we combine two sensitivity analysis methods. The solar method, which gives you a quantification of the influence of each parameter individually and in interaction with others and you have the Morris method which gives you the sense of action of this parameter and also gives you some information about the shape of influence. Uh, it can happen that some parameter will act in a non-monotonic uh, manner and is very interesting sometimes because you can find optimums. So the type of results we have so this was an article uh, on hemp culture. So the, the, the stakeholder is the agriculture. And um, for example, here we found the seven, uh, seven uh, action leaders for the agriculture. Uh, some of them acting uh, differently on, on different uh, impacts. Uh, if you have a green cell, it means that you have to uh, increase uh, the, the parameter in order to decrease the indicator. Uh, so, and if you have a red cell, it's the contrary. So for example, here, uh, you can see that uh, the most recent are the engines that are used for the cultivations, uh, for the production, uh, the less you will have uh, toxicity or human toxicity, and you can see that it can decrease from 30 to 40%. So you found this for every indicator. And you can also see that uh, some parameters uh, which are not controllable are quite influent. For example, the nature of the soil here will have an influence on the eutrophication indicator. So in this indicator, there will be quite big uncertainties. If you want to know more about the method, here are some references. Uh, two articles are published uh, on uh, in the second article, we have added one stakeholder. Um, uh, initially, we, all, we had the agriculture, and we added uh, the industrial system that we produced uh, insulation for based on hemp. Um, but you also will have a future reference that are coming out very soon, 
one on the design of concrete, reinforced concrete, and one on the microagriculture. And, and you can see that the method is general and can be applied to, to any, any case study. Uh, it provides each stakeholder uh, the knowledge of what can be done under its own action perimeter. You can also observe synergies or antagonisms between different stakeholders of the same system. And uh, um, you can also uh, quantify, of course, uh, the result of what is more effective on the total life cycle system. So uh, already this type of LCA is not really practiced, uh, even if all the concepts are here to make it possible. Uh, it's quite underused. But uh, if we come back now to territorial LCA, and combination of LCA and urban metabolism, in fact, the definition of the full brain system here has been changed. Uh, and usually what happens in, in uh, existing studies is that the, the full brain system is the territory that is under study. And for me, it is not adapted to action because uh, in fact, the, the, the on-site uh, action activities are uh, mixed with the foreground system and there's no distinction between them. So this is what I suggest. I suggest that uh, there is, there should be a distinction between on-site and foreground systems. Uh, here you have an example of a, a territory. It contains uh, different types of activities and these flows uh, linked to these activities, they are connected to uh, off-site or background system. But inside the, the, the on-site system, you can distinguish different foreground systems that are linked to different And to me, it's very important that uh, stakeholders uh, have their action parameters very visible. This means that the models uh, that are today used uh, in current uh, studies should be a bit more different. Uh, and it requires to investigate and model other things, uh, additional things like uh, the list and possible scenarios that one stakeholder can have uh, in its own action perimeter. Uh, sometimes can require individual behavior models or, for example, economic models that could drive the behavior uh, of, um, uh, of you know, economic production. So uh, this is my conclusion and uh, I'd really be happy to discuss with you uh, more about this, maybe to collaborate on that topic uh, in, uh, in further, further studies. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have the occasion to work on a change uh, and I can answer two questions you during the conference. Thank you.